Hey everybody, I've got a good one here. This is the Alaska Aviation Survival Kit. It's made by Best Glide ASE, and we're gonna check it out right now on Kitbashed Survival. All right, so Best Glide ASE. You know, when some people hear that name, they think, what do they make, personal lubricant or something? But no, that's the name of the company, Best Glide ASE. And the name of the company stems from the fact that they got their start making aviation survival kits. So Best Glide is a reference to airplanes, as is ASE. It stands for Aviation Survival Equipment. Now, although Best Glide got their start making aviation survival kits like this one, today they make all sorts of different types of survival kits for all sorts of different types of situations. I've reviewed a lot of their kits on this channel and I'll be reviewing more in the future. And I've always been pretty impressed with their stuff. They make a good product and most of their stuff is made in the USA, which is always a bonus. Now, although this is an aviation survival kit in quotes, you don't really have to use it for that. It's not that specifically tailored. You could use it for other purposes, but its intended purpose is of course as an aviation survival kit. Now, when I say aviation survival, I don't mean for a big wide body passenger plane like a Boeing 777. I mean for small airplanes that might fly around a place like Alaska. And for small planes like that, you want a decent survival kit, but one that won't take up too much space and yet has enough basic gear to help you out if you have to make an emergency landing or you get stuck somewhere. And that's what these are all about. So the price of this kit on the Best Glide website is right at $180, which yeah, that's expensive, but keep in mind, there's a good bit of gear in this kit and the kit is very well made and where possible, everything is made in the USA. And of course the kit is also packed in the USA. And as we all know, when you make something in the USA, it's gonna cost more than when you outsource it to someone overseas. Also, when you think about that high price, and this is something that so many people seem to forget, Best Glide is running a business. And when you run a business, you need to turn a profit in order to stay in business. And so of course, they're gonna sell this thing for more than it costs to manufacture. So if you went out and built this kit on your own, of course you would pay less for it. It's always cheaper to do it yourself. But of course, when you make it yourself, the money you save is offset by the fact that you now have to invest more time in building the kit yourself. And so really, when you buy something off the shelf like this, what you're paying for is the convenience of having somebody else do the work for you. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out this kit. So the kit comes in this really nice bag. This is the Best Glide Alpha Response Utility and Kit Bag. Government issue, made in USA. This is the medium alpha bag, and they come in a variety of colors, black, olive drab green, coyote brown, and red. You can choose which color bag your kit comes in. I chose red, of course, and you can also buy these bags separately if you want to. As I said, it's very well made. Seems very durable. They've got these two Velcro pockets, one on each side, and they are unused right now. So we could stick some added gear in there if we wanted to. It's got this nice carry strap. Connects to these loops on either end. And then you've got these carry straps as well. And open it up. All right, so first we've got something pretty cool. I doubt you've seen this in many survival kits. This is a gill net. It's a fishing net, yeah. So if you're in Alaska and you're flying around and you make an emergency landing or you're stuck somewhere, well, you can go fishing. <laughs> Pretty cool. I'm not sure how useful this would be if you were in the desert or something, but if you were in Alaska or somewhere with a lot of water, well, this could come in really handy. Very cool. And we've got a couple cups. The Coughlin Sierra Cup. Holds one cup or 250 mils. Not bad. And by the way, this kit seems like it's built for about two people, hence the two cups. All right, next we've got a mosquito net. And I think there's two of them in there, yeah. So these are mosquito head nets, I think. Yeah, mosquito head nets, pretty cool. And then we've got another Best Glide Survival Kit inside this Best Glide Survival Kit. This is their Military Scout Pocket Survival Tin. 
I've already reviewed this in a previous video, so I'll put a link to it in this video. I'm not gonna open this one here. I'll just leave it sealed. But this is a good kit. Now, just real quick, if you don't wanna go watch that video, here's what that kit looks like out of the bag. And I'm gonna read you a list of the stuff contained in this kit, because if I don't, I'm sure some people are gonna think this aviation survival kit doesn't have a lot of important stuff, when in fact it does have it in this kit. So included in the Military Scout Pocket Survival Tin, we've got the tin itself, of course. Then there's a Best Glide ASE Compact Tracker 2 Button Compass. There are 10 all-weather survival matches, a Dermasafe razor knife, a sewing kit with six safety pins, six water purification tablets, a Best Glide ASE Survival Whistle, one mini survival fishing kit, some Type 1A utility cord, some brass snare wire, a Best Glide ASE Compact Emergency Signal Mirror, two beeswax candles, a Best Glide ASE Compact Flint Fire Starter with Striker, three Fire Starter Tinder Tabs, one Best Glide ASE Fresnel Lens, six Band Aids and Butterfly Bandages, one Best Glide ASE Pocket Wire Saw, two zip ties, one water bag, some survival instructions, and a pencil. And that's all contained in this tin. And we've got some ration bars. So we've got two packs of ration bars. And these are those mainstay emergency food rations, 3,600 calories per pack, ready to eat, full of vitamins and minerals, and a five-year shelf life. And these bars are good until September of 2025. And I've tried these mainstay ration bars before. They're not great, but they're okay. They kind of taste like a sugar cookie. So they're kind of like a underdone sugar cookie is how I describe them. But yeah, so 7,200 calories, not too bad. And then we've got some insect repellent. Ben's 100 Deet Max Formula, 10 hours of protection, tick and insect repellent. We've got two Mylar space blankets. I think they're a pretty good size. Orange on one side, silver on the other. And I imagine the orange is to help you be seen if you're looking to get rescued. That orange will help. Let's see. Here we've got a Best Glide ASC VS-17 CIV emergency signal panel. U.S. government issue. The Adventurer VS-17 CIV signal panel is used to attract the attention of rescuers or to mark areas for easy relocation later. This signal panel is currently in use by U.S. government agencies. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. You can see the emphasis of this kit is on getting rescued, not trekking through the wilderness for weeks on end. That's not the point here. Alright, we've got a Military P-51 can opener. Got a big first aid kit. We'll go through that in just a minute. We've got a Best Glide ASC Fresnel lens. Help you start a fire if you need to. And I think that's it except for the first aid kit. So let's go through the first aid kit now. There's the back. Well, it's pretty well laid out. Medication, cuts and scrapes, wound care, burn and blister, stop bleeding fast, and instruments. So over here on the medicine side, what do we have? Got a bunch of stuff. Wow. I think that's it. So we've got three packs of aspirin, two pills per package. We've got four packs of acetaminophen, two pills per package for a total of eight. We've got Two packages of Imodium, one pill per package. Got the three bite and sting pads. Got four packs of ibuprofen, two pills per pack. And then we've got three Benadryls, one per pack. 
Yeah, so not bad on the medication side. Right now on the bleeding side of things, let's see what we've got. We've got a big combine pad to help stop bleeding. Got a pair of nitro gloves. Got a triangular bandage. Some duct tape, pretty generous amount of it. Pencil. CPR breathing barrier, <laughs> kind of neat. And we've got a patient assessment form. Got some strip thermometers for your forehead. That's pretty cool. One, two, three of those. And then we've got some tweezers. Got some safety pins here. And then a pair of shears. You can see those. And we've got wound care burn and blister here. Oh, look at that. Adventure Medical Kits, Wilderness and Travel Medicine, a comprehensive guide. Wow. That is pretty cool. That is way more than you see in most survival kits. You get an actual book. Then we've got some medical tape, also a pretty generous amount. Got an elastic bandage a roll of gauze, and another roll of gauze. This is cool, we've got a little syringe. Now, since this is on the wound care side, I would imagine this is for irrigating a wound. Got two long Q-tip type things. And then we've got a couple sheets of moleskins for blister, and wound closure strips. All right, then lastly, we've got cuts and scrapes, which I imagine is gonna be a bunch of band-aids and so forth. Yeah. So we've got a benzoin tincture to help clean wounds. Got a whole bunch of antiseptic towelettes, six of them. Four alcohol prep pads. Two packets of triple antibiotic ointment. five full-size band-aids, and five knuckle band-aids. Yeah, so I gotta say, this is a pretty comprehensive first aid kit. Certainly worlds better than the first aid kits in most survival kits out there. Most off-the-shelf survival kits, I should say. Not bad at all, I like it. All right, so here's all the stuff laid out from the Best Glide ASC Alaska Aviation Survival Kit. Overall, I like this kit. It's got some good basic supplies in it. Now keep in mind that while on the surface it may look a little sparse, that there's quite a bit of stuff contained in the Military Scout Pocket Survival Tin, as well as that very large first aid kit. So while it may look a little lackluster right now, there is quite a bit of gear in this kit. Now that being said, I'm sure some people are still gonna balk at that $180 price tag. And yeah, it is a lot of money, but all I'll say about that is that when you try to make as much as your kit in the US as possible, and granted, some of this stuff is still made in China, but where possible, they've got stuff made in the US, and more importantly, when you pack the kit in the US, it's gonna make that kit more expensive than something made overseas. That's just the way it is. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have a dirt cheap kit that's also made in the USA. So what I'll say is that if you want something that's packed in the USA by people who really care about what they're doing, get something made by Best Glide ASC or other companies that pack their kits here in the States. If you're just trying to get a kit for as little money as possible, get something made overseas where they may or may not care about the quality of the kit. The funny thing is it's kind of a no-win situation because if it's packed in the States, people complain about the price. If it's all made in China, then people call it Chinese junk, which I think is a little bit unfair. There's lots of quality stuff that's made in China. Not everything made in China is junk. Ultimately though, as it always has been, if you want to get the best kit for the least amount of money, build it yourself. Or you can buy something off the shelf like this 
and then add some gear to it to make a really good kit. Now, the nice thing about this bag is that there is some extra space inside. So what we're gonna do now is add some extra gear to this kit to take it from being what I think is a pretty good kit on its own to being an excellent kit. So I'm gonna start off by adding some additional shelter gear and I'll go with this Mylar tube tent, some life tent, and it'll fit two people. I'm also gonna add a few things in the lighting department. So I'll start off with three of these little tea light candles. I'm also gonna add this flashlight or torch, if you will. This is a Nikron B70. I got this in a battle box. It's really nice, it's all metal. It's rechargeable. The USB port to charge it is right there. It's got a little elbow thing right here. It turns like that. And it's got a whole bunch of different lighting configurations. Pretty cool. And I'll also add a couple of these chemical glow sticks. These are the kind you crack and they bite up for about eight or 10 hours. In the fire category, I'm gonna add a few pieces of fat wood to help start a fire. I'll also add a big butane lighter. I always like to use bright colors and that way if it falls on the ground or something, it's easy to spot. And also if I have room, I'll add this as well. This is one of those fire starting logs. Extreme Start Fire Starter. Lights charcoal and wood fast. Now while there's a razor knife in the Military Scout Pocket Survival Tin, I'm gonna add a couple real knives, starting with the perennial favorite, the Mora Companion. These are great knives, relatively inexpensive, about 15 or 20 bucks, but really well made, really high quality. And just like the Bic Lighter, I like to use a brightly colored version if I can. That way if it falls on the ground, it's easy to find. I don't like using camouflage color knives in survival kits. Having stuff that's dark colors is more of a bug out bag thing in my opinion because you're trying to be low profile and hide and not be seen. Whereas with most survival kits, you do wanna be found. And so in that case, having something that's bright is just fine. And the second knife will be this Victorinox Fieldmaster. And I like this because it has a saw and these Victorinox saws are actually pretty good. Got two blades, got the can opener and the screwdriver, bottle opener and screwdriver, scissors. Victorinox makes my favorite pocket knife scissors. And then on this side, there's the Phillips head screwdriver, the parcel hook, and the punch. And then of course, we've got toothpick there and the tweezers there. So the Victorinox Fieldmaster. Now even though there are water purification tablets and a water bag in the Military Scout Pocket Survival Tin, I'm going to add some additional water filtration gear starting with two of these Life Straw water filter straws. I'll add an extra water bag. This is a Whirlpack one liter stand-up water bag. And then I'll add three Melita coffee filters just to help filter sediment out of any water that I might collect. In the cooking department, I'm gonna add this folding portable stove and it does include fuel tablets. Now, if space becomes a premium, I may replace this with this small portable stove that came out of a Russian MRE. These are pretty cool. And then I'll also add four sheets of tin foil. Each sheet is 12 by 12 inches. In the electronics department, I'm gonna add a micro USB charging cord, micro USB to USB. I'm gonna add one of these little adapters that allows you to plug the USB into a power outlet. Of course, mine's for an American outlet. I'm gonna add a USB to lightning charging cord for my iPhone. And then I'll add this power bank. This is a 10,000 milliamp power bank and it's got two outputs. I'm also gonna add a piece of communications equipment and it'll be one of these. This is a Baofeng radio. You've seen these, they're very inexpensive, but they work really well. This is the Baofeng BF F8 HP. This is the eight watt version. I don't think you can buy the eight watt version anymore in the States. I think it's now just the five watt version, but I've got the eight watt version. Works really well, but you do need to learn how to use one of these things before you 
put it in a survival kit. You need to learn how to program frequencies into it and so forth. But yeah, really cool. You can tune in all sorts of frequencies, including weather, and you can also get FM radio. Especially in Kabul, you cannot film that. So yeah, really nice. Now the Beofang radio uses a rechargeable lithium ion battery. And while it's unlikely I would find some electricity while I was in a survival situation, I'm gonna go ahead and try to add the charger base anyway, just in case. Because yeah, it is possible to find, you know, an abandoned building or something that has electricity in a survival situation. It could happen. But one other thing you might want to put in here, and that I'm going to put in mine, is this extra battery pack. This uses AA batteries, and so obviously you don't have to recharge it. You just need to find more AA batteries. So I've got this and a fully charged battery here and the charger base just in case I happen to find some electricity somewhere. So I think I'm pretty good on the communication side. On the food and drink side of things, I'll add a couple packs of coffee, a little bottle of whiskey. Why not? and six Jolly Ranchers. I'm also gonna add a couple of rain ponchos. And then finally, on the medical side, I'll add a couple of face masks, a couple packets of hand sanitizer, a package of two hemostatic pads. These are those pads that are impregnated with that substance that helps stop bleeding. And then an Israeli bandage for anything serious. Oh, I almost forgot. I wanna add a little bit of TP a couple of porta wipes. These are those little towels that expand when they get wet. A couple packs of sunscreen, 50 SPF. And even though there's already some cordage in the Military Scout Pocket Survival Tin, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. This is about 12 feet of micro paracord. All right, so this is a whole lot of stuff. I'm not sure if all of this will fit into that bag, but we're about to find out. Let's get started. All right, it was a really tight fit, but I got almost everything in there. I also ended up using these pockets on each side of the bag. In this pocket, I've got those mosquito head nets. And in this pocket, I've got that Russian MRE portable stove. I decided to use this instead of the larger folding stove because space was at a premium. Now, I did have to leave a couple items out. The first item I couldn't fit in the bag was the radio charging base. It was kind of a bonus item to begin with. If I could get it in there, great. If not, no big deal because I've got the battery on the radio and I was also able to get that AA battery pack in there as well. So there's plenty of power for the radio. The other item that I left out may surprise some people. I left out that big fishing net that came with the bag. I decided to do that because in my particular situation, in the environment in which I would expect to use this, I probably won't have much use for a big fishing net. I would rather have the tube tent in there and the life straws and so forth than this big fishing net. And also, there's already an emergency fishing kit in that military survival tin. So really, in my situation, I don't need something like this. Now, if I was in Alaska or if I had this on an airplane, yeah, maybe I would put this in there. But you have to customize your kit depending on what environment you expect to be using it in. And for me, the fishing net didn't make sense. Also, you know, if this was in an airplane, which it's not going to be, I don't own an airplane. I don't plan on putting this in an airplane. But if I had this in an airplane, you know, assuming you survive the crash or the emergency landing, you would probably be able to use the airplane itself as shelter. And so you really wouldn't have as big of a need for that tube tent and then you'd have room for something like this. But again, for me, it just made sense to leave this out. You can do whatever you want. And by the way, don't do exactly what I do. Whenever you build a kit, build it to suit your needs, not mine. Anyway, yeah, this is the Best Glide ASE Alaska Aviation Survival Kit. A pretty good kit on its own, in my opinion, but made better with some extra gear. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For now, that's it. I'm Eric Siegel. This is Kitbashed Survival. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.